Now we're gonna do the exact same thing we did in Painter, but in Marmoset. So go ahead and load up Marmoset. And this is gonna be using Toolbag 4, uh, which has a lot of really cool stuff we can start using, like uh, their texture stuff. But everything we need is, need is already made. So here's our render plane and then all of the maps that we're gonna bring in. So we're in good shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drag in that render plane here and go around to the front here. Now, again, you can choose, go from main camera and just go to front. Or you know what, it's probably gonna be back in this case. There we go. Go to back and that's an orthographic camera. Some of the post-process stuff I don't think works in orthographic view. So what, again, I've mentioned this before in other videos. I prefer to go to cameras, main camera, and I just have one camera in my scene. All I need to do is go to main camera, go from perspective to orthographic, and then go in here to my transforms and zero these out. Actually, I lied. Go to your transform or your rotations and zero out X, but keep Y at negative 180. There we go. So there's our plane. One of these is probably plugged into this plane, but if you don't wanna deal with that, you just hit plus, go in here, call this truck render, drag it right onto your plane. Here's what you need to start plugging in. So again, just from Windows Explorer, I'm gonna drop in my normal map. And again, hold down shift and right click to move your light around. If this one looks weird, just hit flip Y and that'll flip it, although it does look correct here. Moving right down here, uh, the albedo map, we don't have a color map, we're just gonna be dropping materials on an ID map. Transmission, we're not gonna be using subsurface scattering, so I'm gonna skip this. Down here under microsurface, we have uh, roughness, which again is just gonna be part of the materials we're gonna be dragging on. And then metalness, again, not something we need. However, down here under occlusion, let's go ahead and add an occlusion map, and then we'll just put in that AO map we just baked. Even further down, we have transparency. Go ahead and set that to cutout. Drop in your opacity map. And then switch this channel to R. And there we go. And then way back up at the top here, there's a displacement. Go ahead and set that to height. Drop in that displacement map. This is really just a Z grab from ZBrush. And if I rotate this plane here and we start messing with this scale, you're gonna see we're gonna really, we can really actually over crank this. I think in ZBrush we had it at 0.5. So you know, we'll go ahead and match that. Uh, but you're going to see the quality is pretty poor, so go ahead and select your render plane here. Check on subdivide and crank the subdivision level up to like 3 or 4. Now you're going to have to go back to your main camera, switch negative Y to negative 180, and rotation zero that back out. So now when we pass this light around, uh, we're not really casting any shadows, but if we go in here to our sky, let's go ahead and choose, go to your presets here, and here's our new library. We'll go ahead and dock this at the bottom. Here's our new HDRI maps. Open this up. There's a bunch in here you can choose from. And again, if you have a cloud in the upper right-hand corner, just double-click it to download it, and then you can double-click it to apply it. Again, shift right-click to move the light around your scene. And then you can also go in here and you can set a child light. So you can just drag this light around. And then as you shift right click, it'll pass that shadow around. And now you're gonna see those cast shadows actually work on that displaced geometry. Now let's go up here to File, Save Scene As. And save it. 